Hey YouTube, this is going to be my final catch-up review for Kamen Rider Zero One. I feel like I said that about the last one, but last time I covered it, I promised I was going to do one more catch-up when Zero Two premiered around that time. So this is going to be my final catch-up before the end game, and then I will be reviewing the finale, which will probably include like the final two episodes, you know, the final arc, but mainly the finale. And then of course I'll be doing a series review, but instead of doing it weekly till the end, I'm just going to do this catch-up uh, before the end game, mainly because there were some points I wanted to talk about. About, and like I said, I promised I would do one on uh, Zero Two. So let's talk about that, because there's basically three talking points I wanted to tackle in this video, uh, but Zero Two is the one that's the least connected to the other ones and was kind of the original idea behind this video. So Zero Two, the premiere of the final form of the series, um, people wanted to know my thoughts on it, and I do like this form. I talked about it a little in the video I did uh, when I covered the news of the form being announced or whatever in a scan, and how dare you if you didn't watch that. I'm just kidding, but I'm not. Why did you watch? I do like the form. I, like I said in that video, I really appreciated that we're doing kind of a more normal, cool looking suit. Like most final forms, not all of them, but in the recent years have always been like a fifth graders, no, that's too old, a first graders art project where they just glue the gimmick everywhere and it's like a giant amalgam tumor collage. And I like that this is more of a classic final form that's just a cool upgrade, and I like that about it. Um, it's very Showa-esque, which I'm sure is intentional. Um, it very much reminds me, because of its slight bulkiness, of actually the Ichigo update suit from the anniversary movie during Ghost. So I dig it. It's not my favorite, but I dig it. I like the way it debuted. Debuted? It's a debut. The way it debuted for the most part, the way it was kind of like he got a new replacement driver, even though it's not a full new driver, it's just an attachment, but the way it was, it kind of reminded me, of, in a way, of the way that Grateful Damashi was like a different driver, but it's not fully. But you know what I mean, because like Z Zia made him a new driver with the attachment on it. And I, I like that, I like the way it debuted, um, it looks cool, the sounds are cool, so all that I like, mostly positive opinion on that. And it did get me thinking based on that and it reminded me of Grateful that I would love in the future to see a Rider series where at some point in the series, maybe halfway through, maybe a little more, like the main Rider's driver is just destroyed and he gets a new one that gives him a new suit form and that's just the new default. I feel like they'd never do that because the main suit is always like the mascot, but I think that would be a really cool idea to see in the future you know, have it just be completely replaced by like a 2.0 suit. I've always liked that idea because of stuff like Grateful and like this. So yeah, I wanted to talk about that, so I mostly enjoyed that. Now the other two parts I wanted to talk about was the stuff that went on with Thouser and his little redemption arc, and the stuff going on with Metsubo Jinrai Net and arc, because that's all kind of tied to something I wanted to talk about, which I've talked about before, which is like third, fourth, villain anti-hero writers always turning good, and um, I'll get to that in a second. But so Thouser, it's really funny that this Thouser arc came along where he finally got some background and some more story and basically is now on Team Zero One, more or less. And it's really funny because one or two weeks before this arc happened, I was just thinking about him, not, weird, not in a weird way. He's kind of useless. Like, his suit was cool, you know, he made things interesting in his initial couple episodes, but then after that, I wasn't a fan of the, you know, let's take humans jobs with machines arc. And then after that, he literally just showed up every episode to deliver the same monologue and get his ass handed to him. And I was like, what a waste of a cool suit and tons of potential. And then I was thinking about how we've been playing this game with Jin and Hirobi and all of them of like uh, them kind of coming around and allying with Zero One or not allying with them. And I was thinking like, man, everybody's going to be working with Zero One by the end of this. I guess that's why they have Thouser to be the only remaining like anti-hero antagonist writer. And then lo and behold, he gets an arc where he comes around to it. And I have mixed thoughts on it. On the positive side, number one positive, this dog, this AI dog, all human gears, throw them in the trash, but this dog, protect it. So this dog is my favorite AI on the entire show because heart dogs. So I like this dog and I did kind of like some aspects of his backstory and I liked that we were actually getting a backstory and I thought like there was going to be a story about how AI hurt him or betrayed him and that's why he hates them now, but it ended up being because of his dad and I don't know. But I like that we got some attention on him, but I wish it would have happened much earlier. And I, even though I kind of dug the arc a little bit, I just don't like when they always have the writers coming around to work with the main writer. And there's never any differences, hardly. Like if there ever is, they're squashed. Um, and I'll be talking about that more again in a second. But so I thought that was interesting that stuff started to happen with him after I was thinking about it, but I have mixed thoughts on it. Then you have the Metsubo Jinrai Net arc stuff where basically, to simplify it, 
Like, everybody done realized Ark's nuts. Like, even the Metsubo Jinrenet guys are like, yeah. Like, the whole thing is, robots are slaves to humanity, and now he's trying to make us, like, a tool as well. So, almost everyone agrees Ark needs to be taken care of, and sort of everyone's Mostly everyone's on the same page, and there's this kind of cool scene where everyone was doing their part at once, and Ark ends up getting destroyed, and, you know, Jin came around, he's on team, let's be good now, or whatever, mostly, um, to some degree. Like, it's kind of still a gray area, but you get what I mean. And, but then it's like, you thought, uh, Hirobi was gonna be on this same wavelength, and I'm like, okay, Hirobi now too, let's just all get the friendship bracelets at, but then, at least they kind of surprised me, he didn't decide to be good and he's gonna go against humanity. So like, that was kind of a positive, because it's like, okay, finally, no more all kumbayas. But then he spews out the same, like, oh, we can't let humanity exist because they have malice in our hearts and human gears can't survive. I'm like, I, I guess human gears would be better rulers because they can't have malice in their hearts since they don't have any because they're not real. I don't know, I'm mixed on that aspect and I do like that there's at least one outlier, like the secondary title of this video is No More Villains, and that's an exaggeration. Whenever I talk about this topic of all the villain writers or anti-heroes turn good. People always come and be like, no, but what about Kronos and this guy and this guy and this guy that didn't turn good? Like, I know, I literally don't mean everybody, but I'm talking about for the most part. And I feel like people can agree that there's kind of a pattern for like mainly the third, fourth writers when they're introduced as either an antagonist or an anti-hero, or even they're still fighting for good, but they're just, their ideology differs from the main writer, even if they're still doing good. And for the most part, again, I'm not saying every single case ever, I'm just saying, for the most part, it's felt like, for a long time now, anybody that has any sort of disagreement with the main writer ultimately ends up on his side. Like, they could disagree about ketchup or mustard, and they'll still end up agreeing by the end of the series. And to me, that's getting exhausting. Uh, even, not even so much, I would prefer to have some writers remain antagonists, but I even just like when hero writers are heroes, but they have different approaches. Like, I think Thouser's character could have been really cool instead of him being responsible for all this arc stuff if he was just a really pro-human guy. So you've got the Metsubojin Rynet guys being pro-robot, obviously, and then you would have, like, Zaya being pro-human, and then, of course, Aruto's in the middle. And I think it's more interesting when you have different approaches and everyone learning to understand each other's thinking, but instead this one's like, nope, Zero One's the only way! And I don't like that, and I feel that's the way it's going, and that's kind of what happened with Thouser, and I like that at least Hirobi didn't fully come around, but they've been dancing around that all series. It's kind of funny because I joked at the very beginning of the series reviews how Hirobi and Jin would eventually be good, and then it seemed like they were going in the direction that Hirobi would be, but Jin wouldn't, and then vice versa, they keep flip-flopping. But I get a feeling Hirobi's gonna come around by the end of the series anyway. So I don't know, I, my point is I have mixed thoughts on it, I'll get more into it in the review, and it's not all as black and white as I make it sort of seem, but I just kind of wish they would allow for some antagonist writers to remain fully an antagonist. I know, not every single one, but ones like Jin Hirobi or Thouser, or at least let them keep their different point of view. Uh, the same thing kind of happened with Vulcan, where all of a sudden they're like, oh no, Human Gears never did you harm. I'm like, I thought it was more interesting when Human Gears did do him harm, because it's not like he was evil, he just had a different point of view, but that's like illegal in writer. There's only one point of view, and it's the main writer's shrieking. And then the most recent stuff happened where, um, what's her face? The main earmuff girl, I forgot her name, I don't know why I'm forgetting it, but she done got blown up. And maybe I missed a scene, um, because I looked away a couple times, I probably should have rerounded it and to be more professional, but did they not done back her ass up on the cloud? Like, she got exploded, so Aruto's got malice in his heart now, so now he's got the arc zero powers. So that's kind of interesting, at least, but was she not backed up? Like, these things can just be backed up, I don't know. But. Where I kind of stand now, currently with the series, with all those thoughts on those main talking points is, like, overall, like, I find it to be entertaining. I'm not fully invested in the story, I'm not fully behind the messages that they're trying to get out about the robots and stuff, um, but it's entertaining, at least. That's one thing I can say about Zero One, is even if I'm not fully on board with everything it's doing, it always manages to be entertaining. Um, so, you know, I'm enjoying it okay for through the end, but like I said, I will be doing a review on the finale and a series review overall, and I can kind of update more of these thoughts after I can see the whole picture, see the puzzle from above. This is just kind of my stream of consciousness right now on those thoughts. But what do you guys think right now of the end game territory of Zero One, the final form, um, the evil riders turning good, uh, Thouser's dog, aka the best character in the show. Let me know in the comments as always. Until next time, if you like, comment, subscribe, and climb the steps and ring that bell. Donations for my videos. Dawson Rider, signing out.